Well, this mirror on the left here is the one that I cleaned and it now seems to have dropped off terribly in performance. So what I've done, I've manufactured a copper mirror as a little replacement. It's a quick, cheap and simple replacement. And I've polished it up and actually I think when I look at it I can see that the polishing on this one is slightly better than the image that I'm getting off of this one. Only slightly. But this one's performance has dropped off to something like about 50% transmission now. So we're going to put this one in its place and see what we get as a result. I've just taken this little extension tube out because I found that there was a the beam was somehow hitting the inside of that. Now whether it's bouncing off the inside of it, whether it's so badly aligned that it's actually reflecting off the inside of it, I don't know. But what we're going to do is just test it without for a minute. And what I've got in there at the moment is my copper mirror. Now bear in mind this is my DIY copper mirror for free. I would say we got to about 32.1. So we'll try. This is the normal mirror that's been cleaned up and put back in. That's 30.5. Staggering, isn't it? I can make a mirror for free and it's gained two watts. <laughs> so that really begs the question whether I should in fact make another mirror for that one as well. I'm going to replace all my mirrors at the moment with some uh, some copper mirrors and I'm going to show you how I made them but uh, I'm almost embarrassed to show you how crude and simply I go about manufacturing them. So basically I've got a piece of 16 gauge copper sheet here which as you can see is um, nothing special but I am choosing an area on it that has been that hasn't got many scratches on it. I've just printed some full-size templates on my CAD machine and uh, we've just stuck them down to the copper sheet. Well I'm now going to brutalize them with a hacksaw And there we are, they're basically shaped now, but what I'm going to do as well is to just tip the corners off because we don't want too much grinding because they get very hot when you grind them. Now comes the painful bit, just a straightforward disc grinder, but you will not be able to do this without a leather glo glove because the copper will get hot very very quickly as you grind it. But I've, I've stuck these down in the middle and by grinding downwards on the on the shape I should be able to cut the paper into the copper not pull it off. Right now as I grind these they're going to get hot which is why I've got this glove on. Um, we want to try and get them keep them reasonably cool because otherwise the sellotape that I'm used will actually come away. So I should just do a little bit like that, put them down on my vise there to cool down and carry on with the next one and I'll keep swapping backwards and forwards so that I don't get them too hot. Well I've now fitted those and made sure that they fit into the aperture the one inch aperture and what I'm going to do now is choose the best side the one with the least amount of scratches on it and we will try and bring them up to a sort of mirror polish finish with this very um, worn out uh, polishing mop on my drill here which is running at about 3000 rpm Two, two types of polishing soap here 
This is one that's specifically for brass and copper. Most mirror polish now after literally just a few brushes how simple it is to make these mirrors. So why would I go out and pay 10 or 12 pound for a, in fact I'd probably pay a lot more than that for a copper mirror. Uh, copper mirrors are supposed to be some of the best mirrors um, but they don't last, <laughs> they last a long time but they've got a tendency to corrode and they use them a lot in very high power machines because they've got the ability to dissipate the heat very quickly. <laughs> we're not losing much heat here. If we're losing one at the most two watts per mirror that'll just, this'll just gobble it up. So there won't be any distortion because of heat in these mirrors. <coughs> well here we go with our next two mirrors. Just a quick check to make sure that they do look as though they are mirrors um, because you can see a reflection, quite a nice reflection off the surface there. We've replaced the second mirror now. This mirror here could really do with a little adjustable XY stage on it um, because it's a bit of a pain um, trying to adjust that up. So that's something I might consider for the future. I've now replaced the rear mirror and it's exactly the same arrangement as this. A little bit more difficult to get to around the back there but there's no need for you to watch that. I mean it's now got the copper mirror in. So I've got three copper mirrors in there and uh, what we're going to do now is we'll run a test. Two point nine. So we'll just run round and check the rest of the mirrors. You won't want to bother to watch this. I'll just show you the results. Well I have to say that I'm mightily pleased with these crude copper mirrors. If we take a look at where we started the third mirror was giving me 32 watts of output. What have I got now? 34 watts. Maybe a small change, but it's a significant change from a professional mirror. The biggest problem I've got now is the lens. 8% loss across the lens. I do think I've got a certain amount of scatter off of the third mirror. So what I'm going to do is make another set of mirrors but I shall lap them flat with very fine 800,000 wet and dry paper before I polish them. But as I said I'm already mightily pleased that such a crude fix can give me such a significant improvement. And I hope you can see that without my power meter I would never be able to attempt doing anything like this. So until I remake the mirrors to a slightly better standard I'm not going to worry about the lens loss because part of that could be scattering within the final tube. These are the mirrors that I've taken out of the machine and after a little bit of research I'm pretty sure that these are actually molybdenum mirrors which are normally reckoned to be 98% transmission and extremely durable. So in fact they're quite a good mirror, but uh, yep, whatever's wrong with them, they don't work for me.